What is up besties? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Scotty Holiday. I'm a queer creator and a huge Star Wars nerd. So if you're into either one of those things, please consider subscribing for more. Today I'm back with another Bad Batch Season 2 review for Episode 9, The Crossing. As the title suggests, Episode 9 really marked a turning point, or crossing, in the Bad Batch's journey, marking their first mission since Echo's departure. I really enjoyed a lot of the themes this episode explored between our characters and Tech and Omega specifically. Episode 9 also showed us the Batch really struggling to figure out a new dynamic in Echo's absence, and I'm glad we got to see that play out on screen. But before I get into my review, please make sure to like the video and leave a comment letting me know your thoughts on episode 9. I'm putting out weekly reviews for each new Bad Batch episode as they air, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. You can catch all my Bad Batch content at the link in the cards and the description as well. Now let's dive into this review. Episode 9 follows the Bad Batch on a mission for Sid to retrieve a valuable mineral, Ipsium, from a mine she recently purchased on an unnamed planet. Once they arrive at the mine, Tech and Hunter go inside to locate and retrieve the Ipsium, while Wrecker and Omega stand guard outside due to poachers in the area. From the beginning of the episode, the vibe is definitely off. As soon as they start to devise a plan, Tech directly points out that this mission will be more difficult since they're a man down without Echo. Omega is totally in her feels throughout the episode as well, still trying to process Echo's departure, while to her, it seems like the rest of the batch don't even care or like they've moved on completely. Tech calls Omega inside the mine to assist with the Ipsium retrieval, leaving Wrecker outside on his own, and though no one approaches them at the mine, we see a poacher spying on them from the distance, and eventually see them making their way to the Marauder on speeder. Once the Ipsium is mined and stabilized, Hunter, Tech, and Omega make their way out, only to discover the Marauder stolen, watching it as it flies away from behind the nearby ridge where they landed. From here, the blame game starts between Hunter, Tech, and Wrecker, and continues basically throughout the entire episode. The Batch attempt to make their way on foot to a nearby spaceport, colliding with a stampede of local fauna, outrunning a storm, taking shelter in another nearby mine, and losing the Ipsium in all the chaos. They spot the Ipsium canister outside the mine, but at this point it's too late, with the lightning from the storm causing it to explode, trapping them inside the mine. As expected, removing the rocks is no easy task, especially with tensions still running high. While Hunter, Tech, and Wrecker attempt to clear away the rocks from the opening, Omega attempts to locate the Marauder. The Batch try to explain that getting out of the mine is more important than locating the ship in this moment, with Tech even telling her, we can always acquire another ship, but this comment really sets Omega off. The line that really dials us into Omega's headspace is when she tells him, we already lost Echo, we can't lose the Marauder too. It makes total sense that Omega would feel this way, since she's already had to deal with the loss of Crosshair and Kamino in Season 1. The members of the Batch are her family and the Marauder is their home, it's her stability, and now she's lost another family member, and now her second home as well. I think Omega is really the only one allowing herself to feel her emotions and the loss, whereas Hunter, Tech, and Wrecker are more focused on the mission at hand and just moving forward. This is all but confirmed when Tech tells Omega, this squad existed before Echo was a part of it, and it will exist after. Then he asks her, what is your issue? Tech seems the most insensitive to Omega's feelings, but instead of him just being dismissive, I think his brain being so analytical keeps him from picking up on others' emotions and cues. At this point, Omega just wants to be alone and goes off deeper into the mine, eventually finding a shaft full of Ipsia. All while Hunter and Wrecker convince Tech to go talk and apologize to Omega for his earlier comments. By the time Tech catches up with her, Omega's already begun mining more Ipsium, attempting to salvage the mission and using it to blow their way out of the mine. She and Tech then begrudgingly work together to extract more, but on the last vial, the Ipsium deposit proves to be slightly out of her reach and Omega falls into the darkness below. Without hesitation, Tech climbs into the shaft and leaps into the darkness as well, falling into an underground river with a very strong current. Together they make their way through the rapids, falling over a waterfall and into a lake below. After climbing to the shore and catching their breath, Omega notices a hole in the wall with light peeking through. After responding to Hunter on the comm, Tech advises him and Wrecker to grab their gear and meet them at the lake below so they can use the Ipsium to blow their way out. While they wait for Hunter and Wrecker to arrive, Tech and Omega finally have their moment. As they discuss their plan moving forward, Omega once again brings up the loss of the Marauder and Echo, straight up asking Tech why he doesn't care. To Omega, these changes make it feel like her entire world is crumbling around her, but according to her, the rest of the batch, specifically Tech, don't seem to notice or even acknowledge the difference. 
No matter how she tries to explain her feelings, Tech tells Omega, we must adapt and move on as soldiers do. Omega counters him saying, we're more than that, aren't we a family? And she's completely right. I think this is when Tech finally understands what she's going through, and her comments put things into perspective for him in general. As Tech points out, he processes moments and thoughts differently than Omega, but this doesn't mean that he feels them any less than she does. Through their communication, they realize they're going through the same feelings and emotions, just in their own different ways. Out of all the lines in this episode, this line from Tech is what really made me realize how neurodivergent coded he is. From my experiences with my close friends who are neurodivergent, the one thing they always stress to me is that their brains just process things differently than someone who is neurotypical. For example, while we may take completely different routes to the same destination, though the route of choice may not make sense to the other, we'll both arrive at the same destination in the end. In my own experience, I also related to Tech a lot in this episode too. I struggle with knowing how to comfort others on an emotional level and even allowing myself to feel and express my own emotions. The way my brain works is also pretty analytical, like if there's an issue, sure I might get sad or stressed about it, but my main focus is usually how I can fix it and move forward, which is exactly how Tech seems to be thinking throughout the episode. In Season 1, I never thought Tech would be the member of the Bad Batch I related to most, but Season 2 is definitely proving that wrong. Once Hunter and Wrecker arrive, the Batch blow their way out of the mine and eventually reach the spaceport they were searching for, only to find it abandoned. Using the large array located within the port, the Batch contacts Sid, asking for help off the planet, but she literally says, no can do, you'll have to figure it out yourselves. Just like Malegi warned them in episode 4, loyalty to Sid doesn't always go both ways and that's pretty clear in this moment. Tech even calls her out, mentioning how they've bailed her out twice before with Roland Durand and her debt with Malegi, but even after that, she only reluctantly agrees to help, promptly ending the transmission before Hunter can even finish his sentence. From there, Wrecker asks the group what they'll do in the meantime and Omega responds repeating Tech's words to her inside the mine, we'll figure it out like we always do. This was such a sweet moment for Tech and Omega, and I really love seeing the smile it put on his face. So it seems like the Batch is going to spend a little more time on this planet after all, and hopefully give them some time to locate and retrieve the Marauder. It honestly wouldn't surprise me if they're able to get themselves off the planet before Sid can even get there. But what did you think of episode 10? Do you think we're going to see more of this planet next episode? Let me know down in the comments below or hit me up on Twitter so we can chat more about it together. I'm putting out weekly reviews for each new Bad Batch Season 2 episode as they air, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out. You can check out all my Bad Batch videos at the link in the description and on the end screen of this video as well. Please consider checking them out and leaving a like. I really appreciate all of your support so much. To keep up with all my Star Wars content, make sure to subscribe and consider following me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at ScottyHolidaySW for all my latest updates. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, may the Force be with you.